My next guest can tell us if commodities are likely to keep rising. Stephen Lieb is right here. He is the president of Lieb Capital Management. He is also the author of Red Alert, How China's Growing Prosperity Threatens the American Way of Life. Stephen, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks, Deirdre. Looking at the commodities activity, we see oil going back up around that $100 per barrel mark. Do we just keep going high from here? I mean, we remember right in 2008, it was something right. like 144, and that right. was crazy, but uh, well, here we are at the threshold of 100 again. Go back, let's say, to the beginning of the century. Ask 100 economists, what oil prices would you get if you had 9% unemployment in the U.S. and Europe on the verge of breaking apart and no growth. There's a recession in Europe, mild. And the U.S., you know, we're not in a recession, but wow, 9% unemployment, horrible economic conditions. And, and U.S. and Europe together, $35 trillion. That's more than half or about half the total world's economy. And these economists faced with those facts would say oil certainly lower than its average in the 90s, $15. Copper, they would probably say 60 cents. But instead, you have oil close to 100. And in fact, if you use Brent, over $100. And copper at 335. These are very scarce commodities. And I think we're ill prepared for how scarce they are and how scarce they're becoming. I mean, commodity that I didn't mention, for instance, rare earths, which includes about 17 different commodities. We cannot make, for instance, uh, uh, windmills, wind turbines, without heavy rare earths. We well, can't. Even our cell phones, right? Pretty much every everything. product that we use every day runs, yeah, for, uh, with some mineral from yeah. rare earths. Because for magnetism, I mean, you, you cannot create strong magnets without heavy rare earths. We don't have any in this country. China has 97% of them by design. Solar energy. China basically has seized control of the solar industry by undercutting everyone. I mean, our poor companies are not competing against China comp Chinese companies individually. They're competing against the Chinese government, which subsidizes their companies. So it's not just Solyndra, which has had trouble. It's companies like Evergreen, which was a marvelous company. For, went from 120 to 3 cents bankrupt. And they're going to do the same thing, I fear, with fresh water. They have desalinization equipment, which is state of the art, and the art is not going to get much better than it is today. And they're selling fresh water 50 cents on the dollar. So, Stephen, I mean, what does this mean for prices? Does it mean that the prices of all these things, so rare earth, so oil, copper, water, just go higher and yes, higher going, as China consumes absolutely. more and more, or and the rest of us, by the way, consume more and more? I they, they have to go higher. And incidentally, we're not, they'll go higher regardless of how much we consume. I mean, in this country, we're actually consuming less oil than we did, let's say, in 2006. Yet oil prices are quite a bit higher. And this is acting as a big, huge tax on the American public. And the tax will continue to grow as China continues to grow. But what I'm worried about, Deirdre, and really, really worried, and causes me to lose sleep at night, are things like rare earths and even copper. There's growing scarcity of copper. Goldman Sachs, I don't know, two weeks ago said that in three years, copper could be unimaginably high in price. It's so scarce in three years that you won't be able to find a price that equates supply and demand. Some companies, I don't know if it's true or not, but we've heard through sources are actually taking the copper and just putting it in warehouses, Absolutely. right? Just storing it up. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that's exactly what this country should be doing. It should be creating creating uh, uh, rare earth storages, like we did for oil. I mean, but oil right now, I mean, Dung in 1992, before anyone knew anything, Dung said, yes, the Middle East has oil, but we have rare earths. And now, uh, 20 years later, it becomes pretty clear that rare earths might be even more valuable than hydrocarbons. Because if we're going to ever transition from hydrocarbons, we're going to need rare earths. Not having strategic reserves of these particular metals, rare earths and even copper and even silver, which you need for solar, is in my opinion, I don't want to sound uh, apocalyptic about this, but it is in my opinion not it, putting the Manhattan Project, which is the mm -hmm. project that we used to build the atom bomb in the uh, uh, 1940s, putting it on hold, just, you know, skipping it, knowing full well Germany was building an atom bomb. That's how you silly. 
see this as the equivalent. Yes, I do. Because we cannot run this country without rare earths. We probably cannot run this country without copper. We will not be able to run this country without silver. There are a lot of critical metals that we are just totally ignoring. For investors, great times. You buy commodities, you know they're going to be volatile up and down, but they're by far but the, the best thing. So, oh, decidedly up. Just a quick statistic. In 2011, despite all the horror and downturns and everything, almost every critical commodity from copper to oil to corn, their average price in 2011 will be the highest ever. Ever. Right. Now imagine if we have a good 2012. Yes, so to your question at the beginning, will oil prices continue to go higher and higher and higher? You bet. They will, unfortunately. We've got to wake up and do something.